A few weeks ago, I got this Dell Latitude E6510 laptop, a computer I got for pretty cheap, and the specs really kind of showed. They weren't really that impressive, but I kept it because it was in pretty good condition. Today, we're going to be replacing its hard drive. This thing came with a 160GB hard drive when I got it, and today, we're going to be replacing it with another hard drive. I know what the people want to see, and that's an SSD, but I don't have one, so for today we have to make do with what I have. I was hoping maybe it would be okay because I don't actually have even any more hard drives. That was the only drive I had. Everything I have left is either failing or is worse than this one. But this hard drive was so slow when I was using this laptop that I have to change it for something else. It's impressively slow, even on Windows 7. One of the things I did do while I was messing with this computer is I installed Linux on it and found it was a little bit faster than Windows 7, but still not great. So that's why I'm replacing it today. So with that in mind, we're going to be installing Linux on this hard drive, specifically Kubuntu, just because it's lighter and it's going to be faster on a hard drive than Windows. but. I also have a lot of Windows files and stuff that I like to use, and since I've been out of the laptop for a little while, this has been one of the ones I've been using. So I'm going to also install Windows on it today. In other words, I'm going to be dual booting it with Windows and Linux, because I couldn't make my mind up on what to install on it. I don't really want to reset up Windows 7 on this computer, I already have enough that run Windows 7 for now. Maybe later, but today I'm going to be trying Windows 11 on this machine, which is not something that's ideal on a hard drive, but you know, sometimes you just gotta work with what you have. I figured I might as well take advantage of UEFI mode in the BIOS, even though it's not true UEFI mode, so it's still better than nothing, I guess. And while I'm at it, you might have noticed this hard drive is very similar to the one I used in that Toshiba recovery video about a month ago, and that's because that laptop has since developed some problems that make it unusable. And I'm probably just going to get rid of that laptop since this one is basically the same thing, only the hardware is better on it. So since I don't have any replacement hard drives laying around, this is the hard drive we're going to use for this video. It's just some 500 gigabyte Toshiba drive as you saw, it came out of an Xbox One, but it's faster than the 160 gigabyte drive, so I'm hoping it will at least be an improvement, because at this point, that's just what I'm going for. If I was better prepared for this video, I probably would have maybe run some benchmarks on the old drive just to compare it, but for now you're just going to have to take my word for it. This thing really was not pleasant to use. At the very least, I've given this thing the best chance it can by upgrading it to 8GB of RAM over 4. This thing can only do 1067 megahertz RAM, so keep that in mind, but I had an 8GB kit that worked in this machine that was going to be for that Toshiba, but ended up going in this instead. So really, the hard drive is just about the only thing possibly holding it back, other than the old CPU, which I can't do a whole lot about right now. With that in mind, you might have noticed that the display on this, just like in the original video, is flickering on my camera, and unfortunately, I can't really do a whole lot about that. I've tried changing my camera settings, and it's just not happening. I would like to use the capture card on this thing, but unfortunately, Dell's BIOSes are kind of weird as we discovered in the E6530 video, so I can't connect it to my capture card at all until the graphics driver is initialized, so we'll have to wait until I can get drivers installed. With that in mind, the Windows installation didn't take too long. I did it over USB this time, just so that I could, you know, have it not take five years. Since as I discovered in the test video, the DVD drive in this thing kind of sucks, so I did it over USB. Otherwise, it's just standard Windows 11 setup, so we're gonna go ahead and skip it because as you can see, the display flickering is really bad. I'm guessing it's just because this display is just the lowest end, crappiest one you could have gotten at the time. Now I probably didn't need to on this computer since it's Windows 11, but I ran Snappy Driver Installer on it anyway just to be safe, since I wanted the most up-to-date drivers I could get on this thing, which isn't even a lot since at this point a PC of this age is going to have most of this hardware built in. And that at least made the display look a little better. 
With basic setup done on Windows 11, it's time to turn to Linux, where I'm going to be installing Kubuntu 23.10. I installed Zorin OS on this thing just to try it out because I needed to get some work done and this thing was being so slow on Windows 7. But I'm going to just try something simple today in the form of Kubuntu. I don't really have any particular preference in Linux distros, I just kind of like to test different things so sorry if you wanted to see a different one. My personal, you know, experience and knowledge about Linux in general isn't that great so for me personally, I like to start with something simple. And I just need something that's going to not be nearly as slow as Windows on the hard drive, since probably this is what I'm going to use the most on this machine when I use it. Interestingly, Linux did not appear to pick up the Windows partition at all on the hard drive, instead just prompted me to erase the whole hard drive. As a matter of fact, it didn't even pick up the partition at all, I had to make my own. Which, you know, isn't the end of the world, but it was kind of concerning that it wasn't seeing the Windows partition at all? I don't know, I'll figure it out later. Either way, I just kind of made a partition about halfway through the drive. I don't think I would have been able to do a setup like this with that old 160GB drive anyway just because of space reasons. But fortunately, everything worked otherwise and, well, the Kubuntu installer is just the Kubuntu installer. I won't share a whole lot about that because while it was installing, the screen went to sleep. Now, normally, this isn't a huge problem, but for some reason, when I booted it back up, it asked me for a password. Maybe this is more common knowledge than I'm aware of, but I didn't know what to do in this situation other than to just power down the whole computer. I wasn't even sure if the installation had finished, since I was doing other things while I was letting it install, because it did take a little while. Fortunately, when I booted the computer back up, it didn't seem to affect it at all, as at least both partitions were still showing up. So, the install probably finished, it just didn't say or whatever. At the very least, after a short period of time, now we were at a usable desktop, where if the computer goes to sleep, now I actually know the password. With that in mind, I returned to Windows to start letting Windows Update run, since there weren't a whole lot of things that needed to be installed, but cumulative updates need to install and stuff like that, and those always take a very long time. Of course, I was still having flickering issues with the display, and so at this point, now that I had both operating systems installed, I decided to switch over to the capture card. While it was letting Windows Update run, however, it out of nowhere just dropped the Wi-Fi connection and I couldn't connect back to my network at all. I tried restarting the computer, tried disabling and re-enabling the Wi-Fi card, nothing was doing it. It just said it couldn't connect to my network. As a sanity check, just in case Windows Update maybe screwed up one of the drivers, I booted into Linux to check the same thing and indeed, it could not connect to my Wi-Fi at all. This was one of the few things I had an issue with when I first started testing this laptop. Its Wi-Fi chip was not very good at all. It was constantly dropping the connection, and even when it did work, it was really slow. So, presumably, it's just either being a pain in the butt, or it's actually just quit working. Fortunately, as it turns out, I have a replacement Wi-Fi card that came out of some HP computer. It's a Realtek chip, so I don't know if it will work with Linux, but, might as well try it at this point if I can't get wireless any other way. I didn't mention this in the original video, I don't think, but the bottom cover comes off with a single screw, giving you access to pretty much everything. Except for the wireless card. At this point, I freaked out and thought it was maybe hiding under the keyboard, but as it turns out, the Wi-Fi card is just hiding under another cover that's up by the battery. It takes a little bit of getting to, it's obviously screwed down separately, and you have to remove the display cable first. But then, sure enough, the Wi-Fi card is right there, so that's good. I suppose it's a better way of putting the Wi-Fi card than underneath the keyboard or something, it's just a little more work. The Wi-Fi chip this thing came with was a Broadcom Dell wireless card that I've had kind of iffy results with. And I don't know where this Realtek Wi-Fi card even came from, to be honest. I didn't even know I had it, but at the very least, I guess it's worth trying. Before I put the machine back together, I booted into both Windows and Linux to confirm that, indeed, 
The Wi-Fi card did then work. It connected to my Wi-Fi with no problems. Now the machine can go back together. I did a basic connection test just to make sure and it's faster than the old Wi-Fi card but still not nearly as good as what my Wi-Fi can do. I installed a few basic programs on this thing just so it wasn't a completely bare install and then got back to updating Windows which definitely takes a long time on literally anything even if it has an SSD which this doesn't so you can imagine how long it took. And with the basic updates installed that's kind of about it for Windows. It's just a basic Windows install for when I need to use it on stuff. With that in mind, we can now turn our attention to Kubuntu. Much like I did with Windows after connecting this thing to the internet, the first thing I did was I opened Software Center, or Discover, or whatever it's called on Kubuntu, to start updating things. The original Wi-Fi card wasn't working in the setup either, so I couldn't connect this thing to the internet to get any kind of software updates or anything. I had to skip that part of the installer. So there were definitely quite a few things that needed to be updated, mostly just more software things, which I don't see a reason why not to, so I let that run. Although it's a lot less things than what Windows 11 needed, so it didn't take nearly as long. And same type of thing, it's time to install a few basic programs for things like music playing and stuff like that. And of course, Steam, because, you know, we gotta run Peggle. That's the new benchmark on this channel, apparently. Fortunately, after a few attempts, Peggle did work via Proton, which is good. It doesn't have hardware acceleration, which might just be a Proton thing, or it just doesn't like it very much because this is a game from 2007. But it's something. I booted back into Windows just to make sure that it actually had hardware acceleration and that it wasn't a stupid thing with this graphics chip and in fact sure enough it did so probably just the Linux wasn't meant to run Peggle at all. And there we go a very basic look at installing Linux and Windows on this old laptop. I can definitely tell performance is better than what it would on the original hard drive and again I know and I'm sure I'm gonna get comments about this it would absolutely be better with an SSD which is absolutely my plan in the future, but this channel doesn't make me money, at least right now, so I can't just be buying things like that for every single computer I have, and I have so many other projects that it's kind of hard to be able to buy stuff for all of them. Regardless, I've been using this thing for a few days while editing this video, and for the most part, performance is improved, although it could be even better since, again, mechanical hard drive. I'm still not sure that I will leave Windows 11 on this machine necessarily because it is worth mentioning that this does not officially support Windows 10 or 11, not just in the Microsoft way but in the Intel never made graphics drivers way, so it's kind of sluggish to use because there's no real graphics acceleration or anything or barely any on Windows 10. The fact that Peggle worked at all was kind of a shock to me since, again, this thing just never had proper drivers and support past Windows 7, so that might go back on this computer, especially since now that I have Linux on this and a modern version of Linux at that, it's not really that big of a deal to me what version of Windows it runs. It probably would also help performance if I used an old LTS distro instead of the latest 23.10, but again, kind of just trying different stuff on it for now, and it seems fine as is, so... I'll probably leave it.